I'm from the tribe called Julie. You're not Jewish. I think I'm Jewish, man. You're not I, Jewish. I pray a few times a day. You're not Jewish. I, 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 I eat kosher. You see these black people out here? We the real Jews. You feel me? Not really, no. Yeah. Yes. This conversation is done. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to get straight into it. And I'm going to pop it off with a question. You ever wonder who are those people claiming to be Israelites? Well, looking in the Bible, Lamentations 4 and 8 tells us that the Israelites' visage was blacker than coal. When we look in the definition of visage, it's literally face. So it's saying that their face was blacker than coal. Not to mention, we came out of Egypt. Being mistaken, looking for people like this. Mating with people that look like this. Right? So, who would we look like? Had blood relations with Shemites that look like this. Mated with black Shemites like this. And even had blood relations with them. So who are they? They don't fit the depiction. These people have Turkish roots. They converted to Judaism in AD 740 under their king. Sorry, what tribe y'all from? Israel. The synagogue is Satan. Fake ass Jew, man. We the Israelites, man. We ain't never been called Jew. Jew is a slur. We Israelites, we back. Y'all gonna worship at our feet, you hear me? Y'all gonna worship at our feet. Cause y'all ain't number. Sound like the Revelation 2 9 people to me. I know thy works tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Especially when they are in Semitic peoples. The Semitic people are dark complexion. They have thick black and curly hair. They have hooked noses, rather thick at the base and thick lips, including the Hebrews. See, the black... African Shemites were actually then taken away in slave ships. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And who were the owners of these slave ships? Who were the biggest slavers in the 16th century? Even here we have an ancient depiction of the obvious Negro Israelites being taken from Lachish. But let's move on to what this presentation we're going to prove without a shadow of a doubt that the Israelites have always been black, Negroes, or dark complexion people. So let's get to it. 19th century physical anthropologists in general assumed that Jews had close racial, that is, blood connections with black. The general consensus of the ethnological literature of the late 19th century was that the Jews were black or at least swarthy. One such explained the predominant mouth of some Jews being the result of the presence of black blood and that brown skin, thick lips, and prognatism were typical of Jews. And the next page reads, A long European tradition maintained that the Jews in general were certainly black, metaphorically in the sense that they were disbolical and evil as well as literally. Jews were generally regarded as dark when he noted that the Pope was dark and pale, more like a Jew or an Arab than a Christian. Sir William Buridan happened to visit a Sephardi synagogue in Amsterdam where he commented that the Jews were very dark-skinned and vescivious. They were most black. He goes on to say, Francisco, the French writer and traveler, confirms that the general supposition was that the Jews were black when he noted that all Jews were black although only Portuguese Jews started off black as they say all right and we continue to read and it says tis a vulgar error he wrote that the Jews are all black for this is only true of the Portuguese who marrying always amongst one another begat children like themselves and consequently the swartiness 
of their complexion is entitled upon the whole race, even in the northern region. Continuing on to the next page, it says the idea that the Jews were black persisted into the 19th century. All right. We see that the idea persisted up until the time we were enslaved. Interesting. And we're going to continue on where it says the general look of the Jew was considered to be like that of the black. The contour is vexed, the eye long and fine, the outer angles running toward the temples, the brow and the nose apart to form a single convex line, and the whole physiognomy, when swarthy as it is, has an African look. So let's continue on. We're going to jump to Jews, race, and environment. I'm going to start on page 120, and it says, One occasionally meets with a Jew whose skin is very dark, the hair black and woolly. At the bottom of the highlighted, it goes on to say, as with all the other types of Jews, some biblical scholars are inclined to attribute the origin of the Negroid Jews to intermarriage with the Cushites of biblical times. Just letting us even more that these people were black. On page 149, the author goes on to say, that it is stated that the Falashas are not the only Jews of Negro race. Basin speaks of Negro Jews living on the Luango coast of Western Africa. It goes on to say, the same author claims that though they are of Negro race, still he detected Semitic facial features in their physiognomies. All right, so he basically saw Semitic Negroes. So as we continue out through this book, it reads, In Abyssinia, there is a large colony of Jews called Falashas who are of pure African type. They are described as tall, muscular people with a dark brown skin, like that of the Abyssinians in general. Their hair, which is black and frizzy or woolly, as it is also the beard, which they never shave, but only cut with scissors. Many of them are black have thick lips which are upturned and are practically Negroes. To continue to build, we're going to be jumping to European Journal of Sociology, published by Cambridge University. And it reads, Escaping from Sao Tome, the Jews immigrated to the coast of Angola between 1484 and 1499. They must have settled in several Portuguese colonies over the centuries, minced with the indigenous black population. Near Congo and Gabon in 1776, black Jews called the Bavumbu lived on the coast of the Luango River named the Rio Buni. Furthermore, it reads, by 1847, David Lenniston discovered a group of educated blacks living in the interior some 200 miles from the coast of Luando. These blacks were called the Jews of Angola. For Lenniston, there was no doubt but that these people were the descendants of those who had been deported from Portugal in the 15th century. Other evidence supported his intuition. He continues on to say, that Dr. J. Krepler noted sometime after the First World War that a large community of black Jews existed in the interior of Dahomey. These Jews had five books of Moses written on old parchment in Hebrew. So you see everywhere we look, the Israelites are described as being Negroes, black or dark skinned as well as living in various places throughout Africa. But mainly, what we focus in on is West Africa, because that's where we come from. All right, but the next source we reading from is A Tribute for the Negro. Page 66, and it reads, Though thus separate from the African population, they are black and resemble the other Negroes in every respect as to physical character. It is probably an allusion to the case that Pennington in his textbook says the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa 
are black. Now we're jumping over to New System Astronomy, page 125, and it reads, By this narrative, it also appears that the Negro inhabitants of this interior are not Aborigines, and what appears very presumptive is that they are descendants of some of dispersed ten tribes of Israel. I discovered that the Negroes are in possession of an Arabic version of the Pentateuch of Moses, which they call Turita La Musa. This is so highly esteemed that it is often sold for the value of one prime slave. They likewise have a version of the Psalms of David, Zipporah, Davidi, and lastly, the book of Isaiah, which they call Lingili La Isa, and it is very high esteem. I'm sure y'all get the picture by now, but let's continue to build. We gonna jump to the Hiberian Magazine from the 1700s, and it reads, King John II in 1492 expelled the Jews to the island of St. Thomas, which had been discovered in 1472, and to other Portuguese settlements on the continent of Africa. And from these Spanish Jews, the black Portuguese, as they were called, and the Jews of Luango were despised even by the very Negro, our descendant. So for all you people out there claiming to be Sephardic Jews, claiming to be Portuguese Jews, if you aren't black, if your ancestors weren't sent to the western coast of Africa, if your ancestors weren't sold as slaves, then you ain't the people. It's that simple. A treatise, physical geography is what we're jumping out of next. And it reads, thus the Jews are people who have ever, according to the prophecy, dwelt alone without intermixing with the nations to this day. Now this separate race all descended from brown ancestors. For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yohanan, if not darker. Exhibit every shade of color from the black Jews of Malabar of whom we have such an interesting account by Dr. Claudius Buchanan. We need go no further than the Jews of Southern Spain and compare them with those of Holland and Northern Germany to perceive a very striking difference. Exactly because those are European converts. But let's not get sidetracked. It goes on to say the Spanish Jew is always dark complexion. All right, so next we jump into Nature Knows No Color Line, and it reads, Especially dark were the Jews of Spain and Portugal. The Portuguese Jews were very dark, says Pritchard. The Duchess de Abrantes, wife of Napoleon's ambassador to Portugal, said that the Jew, the Negro, and the Portuguese could be seen in a single person. So dark were the Jews, especially of Portugal and southern Spain, that many whites thought that all Jews were black or dark. Furthermore, at the bottom it reads, many of the Jews who were banished from Portugal by John II settled in the West Indies. John Bigelow, who visited Jamaica in 1850, saw the descendants of these Jews and says they were Negroid. Further down on the same page it reads, Negro Strand was even more evident in Ferdinand, founder of socialism. Marx, his rival, called him a Jewish nigger, a greasy Jew from Breslau who was always concealing his woolly hair with all kinds of hair oil and makeup. And we're going to wrap it up with this book by reading as was already said, the ancient Jews who left Egypt must have been quite Negroid after mating with Egyptians and Ethiopians for centuries. They were probably 
even originally Negroid. The natural history of man reads, the Jews of Portugal are very black. Skip on down, there are many of them in the towns of Cochin and the interior of Malabar. Their residence in Cochin appears to have been from ancient times, and they are now black and so completely like the native inhabitants in their complexion. So everywhere we look, they black. Let's jump to the light and truth, the Bible and the ancient and modern history. It reads, Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, was a Ethiopian who prophesied into Egypt and Ethiopia. It goes on to say, as they were black, so was he. As he was naked, so were they. Led naked and barefoot, young and old, into captivity, even into this day, from Africa. From Africa, their descendants are led away by wicked people into slavery. Sir Harry Johnson, the races of the Negro in the New World, mentions something very interesting in his book. And he says, the Elamites of Mesopotamia appear to have been a Negroid people with kinky hair and to have transmitted this racial type to the Jews and Syrians. In the book, The Jew, a Negro, it states, it would be better to say that the Negro descended from the ancient Jewish type or Mediterranean race, it is hardly correct ethnically to reverse the sentence. It goes on to say, as well, the original Jew and Negro were then descended from the same father. The evidence of intermarriage you mentioned is a universal phenomenon and the close affinity between the Hermetic and Semitic speech and between the northern Hermetic people and the Semitic shows close relations as you surmise. Now let's move on to a chronology of the Bible. And it states, For even Moses, the father of the Old Testament, was a African who used much of the ancient teachings of his fellow Africans of the Nile River Valley. He goes on to say, he allegedly passed down to other African Jews that converted them into what later became the Pentateuchian or the Old Testament. So why was Moses described as an African? Next, we're going to be reading out of the untold story. And we're going to start right here where it says the black Jews went to the Portuguese colonial possessions in Western Africa, which were Guinea, Santo Tome Island, Senegal, Angola, and a few islands near the African coast. Furthermore, it reads, it is certain that many black Jews of Portugal, Santo Tome, and Angola who became victims of the Inquisition and Portuguese persecution were sold into the slave trade. This Atlantic slave trade lasted more than 400 years from 1444 to about 1880 in various parts of South America. Like, come on, man. The only black people coming out of Spain, Portugal, and Africa as slaves were our ancestors. Right? These Jews, these Hebrew Israelites were black. So if your ancestors don't have the receipts to match this criteria, you are not them. You are converts. So we're about to go ahead and get ready to wrap this video up with the last source from Nature Knows No Color Line. Page 12 and it reads, There is no doubt that after four centuries in Egypt, the Jews have mixed with the Egyptians and Ethiopians, whom their legends described as black and woolly haired. Thus the main difference between Hebrew and Egyptian was not racial but religious. Furthermore, we have no proof that the original 70 Jews who went into Egypt were white. According to their legends, they originated in Chaldea and there is considerable evidence 
the inhabitants of that region in earlier times were Negroid. In fact, some writers said that the Jews were an African people. Luke 21, 24 tells us, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So when we look in our land today, we see these Gentile Ashkenazi descendants of Japheth trotting down our land, just like the Most High said. And where are the true Jews? Scattered in all nations. And I'm going to end this video with the Bantu Hebrew phrase, Ubuntu. I am because we are. Shalom and Toda for the support. And may Yah continue to bless each and every one of you.